Despite lockdown, while fishing is hard and we're unable to travel far, I hope this video can show that it's still possible to get out there and have a good day's catch, despite the unfavourable conditions. Hello! Welcome to another day, quite a snowy day, out on the Ribble Estuary. Now today, it's the middle of January, and we've had a ton of fresh water coming down this estuary. So I think the fishing will be pretty unproductive. So what I thought I'd do today is come out and just do a bit of shrimping. Now I've done a video on sort of the finer aspects of how to shrimp, so I'm not going to go into that today. I'll put a link to that at the end, because I don't know why people put links here. But um, yeah, we're going to go out today and we're just going to shrimp and I'll show you us doing that and show you what we catch and hopefully we'll get something interesting. Then we'll take it home, cook it up and I'll show you that as well. Additionally, one other thing I wanted to say, and sorry if I'm shouting, I don't know how the audio is going to turn out on this. Um, I went out the other day and I wasn't filming because I was actually, I was on my own and I wasn't meant to be fishing, I had a bit of work to do, I had to put a marker boy on a state we've got out here. Um, but I did just put the rods in as a sort of afterthought and I did catch a cod, so I'll put a picture of that in here. Because I know all my last videos have just been desperately trying to catch a cod and it looks like I'm just not catching a cod for you. But I have had the odd one, it's just a matter of getting it on film. But anyway, that's another thing, we'll get shrimp for now. Let's see if we can get something. Shrimping. About half of that boat hook is the depth I'm in. About there. Perfect. I'll turn the camera around in a sec. It was snowing horrible before, I nearly didn't come out, but it turned lovely. Probably looks a bit bad behind me if I turn the camera around. Bear with me. Beautiful day. One other thing I'd say um, is if you are going to be doing stuff like this, obviously it's mid January, it's winter now. When you're pulling nets and stuff in this weather, it does get really cold, even though it's a lovely day. So make sure you've got yourself some proper hauling gloves like these. Fluffy ones are dead warm, but you need a waterproof on the outside. And if you are going to do this, it's worth just rigging your boat up a bit, a bit ahead, like think ahead, so you don't have to rig stuff up on the day. So like, I've got a starboard stern cleat just for doing this. If I didn't, this would be a bit tricky. You, you might not know where to tie it to. So just make sure you're rigged up before you've, you know, you've got your net made up and you're casting it around and stuff. Just makes life easier.
doing here, I don't know, you probably can't see at that angle. I'm just running in gear for a bit, just to wash all the stuff out of the net, the leaves, the sticks, any of that stuff. And anything on the sides will go through the hole, obviously. So it's a bit of an easier sort, because in winter you tend to get a lot of rubbish in the net. Well, we have got some quite interesting things here guys. Again, I'm on my own, so apologies for the angles, or lack of angles. But let's have a look what we've got. First of all, as you can see, we've got three juvenile flounder. There we go. Obviously way undersized. Fish of the future, but that's good to see. We'll pop them back. And then we've also got these, which are a species of sand goby, if I could just pick one up. I believe that is a species of sand goby. If I can find the exact species, I'll put it in here. So that's what we got for the fish. Shrimp wise, it was hard. We had a lot of undersized shrimp. But one thing I can show you is the difference between a prawn, which is there, and a shrimp, which is the other ones. So if I get them together in the pot, that is probably the easiest way to show you the difference between a brown shrimp on the bottom and a prawn. I'll get them both on my hand. That is a difference between a prawn, that one's a prawn, and on top there's a brown shrimp. They tend to like different habitats, prawns get a bit bigger, but they do overlap in areas of estuary like this. Well, in terms of shrimps, that wasn't the most productive haul. There was a fair few in, but there was a lot of small, it was a big sort. I was going to film the sort, but it was just too much. Um, so what I think we're going to do is go further down the estuary now and try another sandbank, because every sandbank fishes differently. We'll see if we can find a bit more. I don't need a lot of shrimps for the purposes of this video, but it'd be nice to get a few more for a meal. The knot I tie in the cod end is just simply two half hitches. Anything easier like a bow might come undone in the water and that's pretty depressing when you're just pulling an open net with nothing in it. Anything harder or more complex will be hard to undo with really cold fingers. So just two half hitches gets the job done. Two. Obviously I didn't show the sort of that last catch because it was a bit heavy but the way I determined which shrimps were legal and which weren't with this shrimp riddle that mesh, those holes only the, the undersized shrimp go through and obviously the, the shrimp that are big enough stay on top so I have mentioned that in another video but I just thought I'd say it now because I didn't show that sort
The audio went a bit too bad here, but I'm saying I'll have a quick third troll, then we'll look through the catches of both the last trolls. I'll not film, I've not obviously filmed putting this one out, and I'll not film putting it in, pulling it in, sorry. We'll just take a look at the catch and see what we get. You might be able to see just there is the weight that the net's making, and that's because we're in the shallow water only this far off the bank. And that's about the depth you want to be. I have a lot of confidence when I see that wake. You know it's fishing quite well then. Well, let's have a look what we've got. First of all, loads more of these flatfish. Now, there must be 10, 15 in there. Obviously, these are only small. They're only juvenile fish. But these are a great sign for the future of the ecosystem. The fish are clearly breeding well in the estuary and the fish are growing up nicely, so that's good. Uh, again, more of the gobies. Sorry, it's kind of more of the same. If I just grab one of those, which, believe me, is easier said than done when you can't feel your fingers. Whoops. There we go. Little sand gobies. You often get more of these in winter, interestingly enough. Again, there must be 10, 15 in this hole. That's nice to see. And then shrimp-wise, this is all we've got. Now, you'd want a little bit more than that for a meal. So we'll we'll call this a snack, but it's still I'm just really glad to get out after all the bad weather we've had, and there's enough for us to cook up there and for the purposes of this video. So let's, without further ado, go and do that. Well, that's it, guys. I didn't get loads of shrimps, probably because of all this fresh water coming down. But it was nice to get out on a lovely sunny but quite snowy day and catch some shrimps. So let's get back and cook them up. Okay, so I'm far more of a fisherman than I am a cook. This isn't my forte. If you know a great way to cook shrimps, go for it. If you don't know, this is how I do it, okay? First thing, the most humane way to kill the shrimps is to bosh them straight into that boiling water. Don't put them in the water and then wait for it to come up to the boil because that'll be a bit cruel. So let's do that now. There we go, that'll take it off the boil, so now we wait for it to come back up to boil again. So, once they're back up to the boil, have a glass of cold water ready, and you just want to take it off the boil, so just pour enough in to take it off the boil, okay, and then wait for it to come back up to the boil. Now, we're going to repeat that two more times, which I won't obviously film, um, but repeat that two more times, and then when it finally gets to that last boil, just turn the heat off, and then you're done cooking. I'm also going to show you, after we've cooked them, how to pick them, because some people don't know that, so I'll just quickly show you how to do that. Okay, so just one little tip before we pick them. Now that our shrimps are cooked, I find it way easier to pick them straight from being cooked. So you take them from the boiling water, rinse them in cold water, and I think that helps sort of take the meat from the shell a little bit and helps you out. If you sort of, if you left them in the fridge for ages now, you'd find it a little bit harder afterwards, so if you've got the time, it's always worth doing them straight after cooking. Okay, so the way you pick a shrimp is, first of all, simply take the head off. One pinch and the head's gone. Then you hold the body like this, take the tail, and you twist one way, then the other, and that tail should just pull off the meat like that. And then it's a simple case I'm just peeling that rest of the shell off. I can't really see. And it should just come off as easy as that. And then that's ready to eat. Delicious. There we go guys, that's what the finished haul of shrimps looks like. Interestingly, when they're picked like this, this is how I've used them very successfully as bait for carp, tench, barbel, things like that before. They're a really good coarse fish bait like this. Other than that, I'm going to eat them, myself obviously. Now. We've not got that many today, obviously you would want a lot more than this for a meal, so we'll call this a snack. But there's enough there for say a sandwich or something. And it's also a really nice alternative to get out when you're really struggling to find fish and, and it's the fishing's not very productive. Get you out and you manage to catch something. Hope you enjoyed this video, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.